everybody, welcome to another edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood as we continue to set the table for the 2017 Reebok CrossFit Games season. Today we focus on the men and let's take a, a 30,000 foot view, if you will, here of this thing. What does the competitive landscape look like for the men this year? I think it's the Matt Frazier show. Yeah. Similar to when Michael Jordan finally beat the Pistons and mm -hmm. the Bulls went on to three-peat after that. I think Matt just finally got over the hump, won his first championship, and now I think he's just going to keep destroying the field. We tend to talk about whoever's making the news, right? So if you guys out there are getting sick of us talking about <laughs> Fraser, other male competitors, give us something to talk about. I want to see somebody up, rise up and push him around. Yeah, and not that we need to be reminded, but let's just take a look back at how dominant Matt Fraser was in 2017. We had 27 scored events last year from the Open to the Games. Fraser was in the top 10 in all but six. He won five events at the East Regional, and he had the Games Championship wrapped up with one event still to go. So the question is, who can beat this guy? At this point, I think the only person that can beat him is Ben Smith. And that's only if Ben Smith is 100% healthy and has a flawless run at the game similar to what he did in 2015. And really, Ben's the only one in the field with the consistency across multiple years and different types of events and the resume of success at the games that actually gives him a shot of making up that massive point spread that we saw last year. I, I'd love to disagree with you, but I can't. You're right. right. If, if every single male competitor shows up healthy, they should be like, well, good luck, Ben. <laughs> See what you can do. Or again, every year we have the no names, right? Yeah. And, and every year the intermediary group becomes better, but right now, yeesh, it's slim. Well, two of the surprises last year were a pair of Canadian athletes who had a couple breakout seasons, and we're gonna get to see them go head to head in 17.1. Talking about Patrick Vellner and Brent Fakowski. Vellner finished higher in the World Wide Open. Fakowski had the better regionals, and then at the game, Vellner wound up on the podium by just two points. So when you look at these two, a lot of, a lot of promise here. What are their prospects for 2017? I like Fakowski a lot. Mm -hmm. I think he's a very exciting individual both on the field and he gives great interviews as well. Mm -hmm. So close to the podium. I mean, think about this. Your rookie year at the games, you just want to survive. He had four first place finish where he beat every other competitor out there. However, he also had a 30th, a 33rd, and a 39th. So luckily he had the home runs to offset that. If he wants to be in the conversation continually, he needs some more consistency. And I think when it comes to Patrick Vellner, I think it could be another podium year for mm -hmm. him. If you just look at how consistent he was across the board, in your rookie year at the games, 11 top 10 finishes, and more impressively, a trio of top three finishes in workouts like the ranch mini chipper, the climbing snail, the rope chipper, all that have games level wrinkles that kind of force you to adapt. His one bad finish was a 35th on the ocean swim, even if he just gets in a pool a few times, with his level of talent, he's going to get better at that. So I think the sky's the limit. We're going to give the top four guys on the leaderboard the most attention heading into the season, but there are plenty of men behind that who could be poised for a pretty big year here. And one of them being Cole Sager. I mean, this guy every year just comes from behind and surprises me. You think he's just sitting around in the offseason eating funnel cakes because the first <laughs> few events he just doesn't perform, right? And all of a sudden, in the later half of the competition, he does something incredible. You know, wind up taking fifth at the games after a very slow start. You've got Jacob Hepner, who for the last three years has steadily improved from 18th to 10th, then to 7th. Scott Panchuk fittest person in the world to never stand on the podium. He's always sixth place or better. He could really be a, uh, a serious you know, contender mm -hmm. with Fraser as well. I mean, I'm going to go a little dark horse here. I think there's a guy uh, coming out of the Central East region, Alex Anderson. First off, the Anderson family is just fitter <laughs> than you. But he's a guy who went from 13th in his rookie year to 11th place last year. I had the opportunity to watch him compete at an off-season comp just recently, and I was so stricken by his poise. In every event, an athlete jumped out in front of him and he methodically hunted them down on the right way to a podium finish in that competition. And that's the kind of mentality that makes you successful at the games. There's always gonna be an athlete in front of you, but if you can stay poised and methodically just work your way through the workouts, you'll be just fine. I'm a big Alex yeah. Anderson fan. We're gonna have some athletes who will be competing in new regions this year. Let's take a look at those. And the biggest name that stands out is Dan Bailey, who returns to the Central East after competing the last few years in Southern California. Bailey missed the games last year after really a perfect storm of things took place to keep him out of Carson. So now the question is, new setting for him, a familiar setting, but can he make it back to the games in 2017? I don't, what happened to Dan Bailey last year boggles my mind. Yeah. All top 10 finishes, you don't qualify? I mean, we wouldn't have guessed that. 
He's out of California. He's back in Ohio. His home stomping ground, surrounded by a good support network. I think he has a better environment out there to focus on training. So my short answer is yes, we see Dan Bailey back at the games. I agree, but I think it's going to be a dogfight. Just his base level of fitness that he's built over the years can take him as far as he went last year. That's all top 10 finishes, maybe on the bubble of a game spot. The difference this year, I think, is execution for him. Being able to have every single workout perform the way he expects to and the way he game plans for it. And I think with those lifestyle factors getting taken care of, that'll be much more likely. He's not getting any younger either. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You know? well, he's, it's going to be fun to watch all these things play out. But remember, we have to start with the Open before we can even get to regionals and the games. And of course, the Open begins on Thursday, just a couple days away. 17.1 will be announced live from Montreal. We'll also have a presence in Paris. You'll get coverage from both of those venues. We will have a live pre-announcement show. We'll be on the game site. We'll be on YouTube. We'll be on Facebook Live. We're going to have the cool down show presented by Arosti. And this year, we're kicking Roe versus Boz up a notch. It will be on Facebook Live, but we will have the full power of our broadcast forces behind that. We will have play-by-play -play and color. Nice. We will have graphics. We will have some special guests. Oh, That's yeah. going to be a lot of fun to watch. Definitely looking forward to seeing if Roe can make up for the sweep in 2016. That's going to do it for us for today. For Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland. Back tomorrow to take a look at the other divisions in the 2017 Reebok CrossFit game season.